one lonely farmer. Um, he, he's just, you know, a squirrel finding his nut. Uh, his comment section, I, I like the, you could almost skip the video and just go to the comment section because sometimes the most non-controversial topic guys will just be lighting him up in the comment section and it, it's kind of funny um, I'm convinced I'm convinced that if Wes went out to the road and pooped a pile of gold that you would have people in the comment section say well he just created a hazard for traffic oh my god does he not know how pollution how how caustic gold is to the environment kind of deal and uh, <laughs> instead of a bunch of you know most of us would be like that pile of gold just fell on that dude's butt a bottle of alcohol and I've got a clean pot of gold a pile of gold like you know so he, he's a good guy um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all entertainment isn't it it uh, so if we're going to move in soil health, let's define soil health. And according to soil scientists, in a nutshell, healthy soil would be soil that can make an abundant crop that is nutrient dense, resistant to uh, bugs, weeds, disease, wind and water erosion. And the soil itself will have very good structure. They'll have 25% air, 25% water. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, that, that's healthy soil. So how is it possible that I can be doing this finished pass tillage? Now why on earth am I doing this tillage? Well, for, remember I row crop cultivated, but two, a lot of these fields have been no-till, strip-till for a lot of years now, a number of years now, and they're starting to get pretty rough, especially after this fall where a couple of the fields had some pretty serious ruts going on. So I'm just trying to make these fields smooth and tolerable again for driving. And so if that means uh, that behind soybeans, I have to run the finisher uh, to keep smoothing these fields up once in a while. Maybe it's not every year behind soybeans, but once in a while behind soybeans, that's not the end of the world. And, and that kind of leads us, you know, and other guys, you know, there is a place for all tillage tools. But for vertical till, blade plows, field cultivators, Kelly harrows, things like that, your finished pass type stuff, where we can be sizing residue, maybe a little bit of incorporating, smoothing up a field, uh, stirring in either herbicide or fertilizer. Uh, there, there's a legitimate reason to be running over a field. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys that I would rather do this than come into my headland because all the ruts and tracks that we're going with also go across us at the headland. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not spending the rest of my life coming into the headland, uh, 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 chipping my teeth out of my head just so I can say, I am a no-tailer. Like, no, not happening here. Um, so I reach out. My thought exactly on the vertical till is like that. That thing's going to just be a, a horrible erosion machine. So you reach out to some soil scientists and you take your shovel to some fields and figure out what's going on. So if we look behind me, so we're going a couple inches deep. So this is a soybean field. So all year long, these soybean plants have been putting down roots and building soil life. And nothing builds new soil or topsoil faster than roots and their root exudates and life. Um, it takes hundreds of years for our residue on top to even contribute a tiny fraction of soil. But in a rather short time, 
roots and root exudates and soil life can build soil very quickly. We, we, can, we can learn that from the grazing side of the farm. So we reach out to people to give us some real information and we do some of our own digging. And what you see is, is so here's our depth of tillage and here's uh, the rest of our soil profile, that top, you know, nine, 10 inches. So that's that. So this we're stirring up, we're slicing, dicing, mixing, and stirring. And like I said, my first thought was like, yes, this is gonna be an absolute erosion nightmare. But as vertical till became more popular, and the guys were using it to move away from a primary tillage pass, you're like, that thing doesn't have any more erosion than the primary till field in the fall next to it. In fact, it probably has less. And you're like, how can that be? If we look at this nine inch piece that's undisturbed, we still have all the benefits of soil health. We've got some soil structure. We still got all the life, you know, the, the, the bugs are worms and beetles that make tunnels through the soil. We still got all the roots in the profile. So all them things are still there giving us the benefit. So those of us that were thinking like, God, that is gonna be just like a disc in the old days where you're gonna end up with that hard pan and a, and a shear layer for erosion, it wasn't happening. Because them roots and all them bug channels are still doing what they're supposed to do for us. We've got the benefit of soil health down below, but we've got the benefit of tillage up above for all them things we talked about. Even if it's as simple as just making it so I can drive on the field next year. Um, but the 25% air, hold on, the 25% air, that's an important one. When our soil goes anaerobic, lacking oxygen, that's when we get our disease, pests, and weeds issue. That's the environment that all of the things we don't want thrive in. And if we relate, you're always told that primary tillage is like a tornado coming through your neighborhood. That it's gonna destroy your houses and take a few lives. Well, after that tornado, we can repopulate, rebuild rather quickly. And if the tornado keeps coming through, you might suppress population a little bit, but there's always gonna be some level there. They're just hardy and they're gonna endure. But if something comes over that neighborhood and compresses the air out of the neighborhood to where it's a very low or no level of oxygen in the soil or atmosphere in the soil uh, rather quickly the population is going to move out and they ain't coming back to rebuild until the air comes back and so that's our soil if we as we transition from full till to no till we want to monitor that compaction. And Grow This Farm Up Name Drop had a great video on using his compaction probe, and I hope I someday get to the level of soil that Brad has down there, because he can walk around that farm and just drop that probe into that soil. I will tell you what, Inferno Magazine was up here to do an article this summer, and he said, can we go out to the field in July? In July, in East Central Minnesota, he wanted to go out to the field and get a shovel of soil. And I laughed, I laughed very hard. I still put myself to sleep at night laughing over that comment. In East Central Minnesota, in July or August, I'm 300 pounds. I am not jumping on a sharpshooter shovel to get it into the ground. Uh, that compaction probe goes like three or four hundred pounds. I can needle that thing out instantly before you barely get in the ground. Uh, our soil gets tight and hard. So 
the definition of healthy soil was 25% oxygen. <clears throat> if I had to stick to the true being a true no-tiller, excuse me, I am very depleted on oxygen in my soils. How much health, how much life am I really bringing to the table in my soil like that? None. Zero. I'm not moving forward at all. Um, and so them are the fields that we see dandelions and foxtail just thrive in. Absolutely thrive in. And uh, I, hope, I hope that made sense, painted a good picture for you. So we'll talk about how primary tillage over oxygenates, burns up our carbon, burns up organic matter, gives us a false sense of hope. That's a different video. Uh, how it promotes compaction. Um, but we're trying to, I'm trying to transition. And that's where strip till comes in. And strip till is, is almost, you know, in between finish and primary tillage. Um, it's a lot deeper than a finish pass, but it's a lot less aggressive and shallow than a, a primary tillage tool. I will sacrifice that couple inch slot for my strip till of soil health to still raise a hopefully positive cash flow crop on the farm. Because I've got fields over here that if I didn't do something, they would go backwards faster than they could go forward and then I'm out of business. If that, I hope that makes sense. So what the strip till can do for us is, one, we can greatly reduce uh, our fertilizer, our chemicals per acre, which moves us forward in soil health. Uh, but that strip till slot, if we come in like with corn, that massive root system of corn, and then we bring in some cover crops in between the rows, but that corn root is gonna fill that slot up for us this year. And now look at all them root channels. Think of all them root channels, all that worm channels, all that nutrient that's getting mineralized. And it's nature's fertilizer, not the co-op's fertilizer. Now let's say we do a vertical tilt pass behind that corn crop. We erase the row above of corn stuff. So now we could plant right on top of last year's corn row. Think about that soybean plant. That soybean plant is going to start putting roots out. And rather quickly, them roots are going to find all them root channels from last year's corn plant. All that good fertility from last year's corn plant. All that soil life that's there. And that soil life is going to see the next generation of roots. And it's going to be like, yay! You couldn't ask for a better seed zone or a seed environment to grow on than if you sacrifice some soil health in your top couple inches to be able to put that soybean plant on top of last year's strip till corn plant. Man, man, oh lie. It, uh, that is, that is something else. That is really something else. It, uh, I hope, I hope that made sense. I'm going to end right there. You guys, let me know what your experience, what your thoughts are, and uh, if you've done or still are doing some finished tillage to maintain fields while moving forward in soil health, uh, we're going to call that a day. I'm going to enjoy my day out in the tractor and on my land, and uh, we'll see you next time.